Hi, it's Kate Arndt, the Youth and Diary Historian here at the Holocaust Museum in Houston. Welcome to another edition of Youth Chats. We have not done an actual Youth Chat episode in a while, um, and there's a lot of reasons why. Um, it's not because of anything that's going on here, luckily, but it's just that's been going on a lot in my personal life. But I wanted to get back in it, kind of get back into the swing of things. Let's get into what matters, you know? So, today I wanted to talk about two little boys that I don't think I've ever really spoken about here on this series. And here we are. These are the Pfeffer brothers. Let me see if you can see them a lot better. <laughs> we have featuring Olivier. This is Jan Peter and this is Thomas Pfeffer. These are brothers. I know they look a lot like twins, but they are brothers. Jan Peter, born in May of 1934. Thomas, born in November of 1936. Both boys were born in Germany. Now their last name is Pfeffer. I don't know if I actually said that. This is Jan Peter and Thomas Pfeffer. Now, if you think of the last name Pfeffer, <clears throat> you think of Anne Frank, you know, Fritz Pfeffer. No relation, by the way. They're not related. <clears throat> So, so, Jan Peter and Thomas, they immigrated to Holland in 1940 because things were getting so bad in Germany. So, <clears throat> in the mid-1940s, they were deported to Theresienstadt, these sweet little boys. And in May of 1944, they were deported to Auschwitz. Now, if you know anything about Auschwitz, you knew that children did not live there. You knew that if children their ages, 7 and 10, they would be gassed immediately. Now, if children did live in Auschwitz, it was for one of a few reasons. One, they looked old enough to work. Or two, they were experimented on because if they were twins. Now, they get to Auschwitz in May of 1944. They don't die immediately, which is amazing because, like I just said, that, you know, children didn't live in Auschwitz. So they must have looked old, either old enough or like twins, basically. And they do kind of look like twins in this picture because of their ears, I think. Jan Peter was characterized... Jan Peter was characterized or remembered as a little boy that had a lot of energy but he was also very shy. He was very close to his mother. He liked to be by his mother. Thomas, on the other hand, is remembered to be very mischievous, very fun and loving. You know, both boys loved their parents dearly and their parents loved them. In July of 1944, July 11th to be exact, these two little boys didn't make it. They didn't make it. They were guests with their mom. didn't make it and you have to think about it over a million people lost their lives at Auschwitz 90% of those people that lost their lives at Auschwitz were children teens and children like these little boys and people would kind of ask my you know people ask me you know why why would they want to kill these little boys because I always I always you know when I do my tours here I always use these pictures of children, I say, do these kids look like threats to you? Do they look like a threat to you? And the, and the simple answer is no, because that's what I get. And that is the answer that I'm always going to take. But to the Germans and to the Nazis and to their freaking collaborators, these little boys were threats. And most students ask, well, why were they threats? Why did they want to kill the children or the teens? And I always say this, and I'm going to give you kind of a few minutes to think about it. What can children and teens do that most adults can't? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it, then I'll tell you what I tell them. Do you have an answer? Okay, so I get usually a lot of different variety of answers, but the main answer I usually look for is to grow up. They can grow up, they can go to school, they can have children. That's the biggest thing they can have children and continue the lineage. 
So what you do is you kill the children at the source when they're young. So they can't do that. These little boys never saw the past of ages 10 and 7 because of stupidity, literal stupidity, and racism and anti-Semitism. So these boys died in a gas chamber with their mom, and they were burned. And their ashes are now in Auschwitz some, somewhere. They're part of the grounds now. And I think for me, when I look at these kids, especially these little boys here, I've studied these children for quite a while. It still kind of breaks my heart a little bit in a way that these boys did not get a chance to see the light of the end of the war. Did not get a chance to see 12 or 14 or get to go to their first dances or get married. They will never know what it's like to be married or have children or hold, you know, a son or a daughter of their own. They won't understand that because they're dead now. Because of one horrible man who had an idea to exterminate Jews because of anti-Semitic rhetorics. These little boys suffered the price. I think about them a lot and what they could have been, you know. Their father also died. He was murdered as well, but it's very complicated on where he actually died. Some say he died in Auschwitz. Some say he died somewhere else. It's, it's complicated, and I'm still trying to find that exact answer. But at least they died with their mother, and they died together. It kind of gives me a little bit of peace in that, in that motion. <clears throat> their grandmother also died. It's like they're almost their entire family is gone. They do have cousins, thankfully. I think one is in New York, and she was the one who submitted the photos of these two little boys. And of course, they're dressed alike, as most children back then were. Um, <laughs> they're just adorable, very cute. Um, I had written about them, actually, in a book um, that I did called Among the Many, and you can buy it on Amazon. And I realized, and I should go back and put this back in, that I didn't, I just put a picture of Jan in here. I didn't put a picture of Thomas, but, but there's not a lot of pictures of Thomas. Pfeffer is only Jan is what I could find. So I guess that's the only one I was able to put in there. And there's Jan with his grandmother. I could tell it's Jan because of the hair in his, face, in his ears and the way that he looks. Yeah, I, was, I say this. The only thing that remains is a single picture of Thomas and a couple photos of young Peter. That's it. That's it. It, it, kind of, it kind of makes me very sad to know that these little boys did not see what changed, I guess, in the world. I guess for me, things are, you know, they're not sending Jews to concentration camps anymore, thank God, but I still think that anti-Semitism is a real thing, it still does exist, and most people would think after the Holocaust, anti-Semitism would cease. However, it did not. It gave, the Holocaust gave the anti-Semites something else to, to, to rail us for, if you will. But I would just, I do want you to take a look one more time at these two boys. And just know that because of hatred, this is what hatred looks like when it goes unchecked. Boys that did nothing, were just Jewish, just wanted to play with their toys. Jan Peter loved his little stuffed dinosaurs and Thomas loved his stuffed dogs, stuffed animals, you know. And they were slaughtered because of just what they were. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I not get depressed by studying these kids? 
and doing these, doing the youth chat series or doing the tours here. And my simple answer is this. Does it break my heart? Yes. Do I cry and scream about it? I do when nobody's around, when I'm in here, because it's just, you could feel it in here. But it also gives me strength that these voices, like these little boys need to be heard as they are screaming and they want to be heard. And if that's the case for me to do that here and to give a legacy to these little boys, even though they didn't make it past 10 and seven, then that's what I'm gonna do. And I've been doing that for a long time. You see, I've studied these boys since 2010. I was 18 years old when I started studying them. I'm 32 now, so you do the math on how long that's been. These boys have been a part of my life, have been a part of my Holocaust studies journey. And I don't think I'm gonna give them up anytime soon. It does break my heart. The fact that these two, you know, they were looked at and they were seen as a threat when they weren't. So my thing for you today is go online and go to, uh, I think the USHMM still has this, or Yvette Yed Vashem, and just look at pictures. This is Gabor Neumann, by the way. We'll do a youth chat on him. His story is even more heartbreaking. And look at that little sweet face. I think he's adorable. Um, just look up pictures and just study kids. I mean, just study the faces. I mean, just look at these faces. Helene Bear, Yitzhak Rudashevsky. You know, I've got a lot of faces in here. Faces that not a lot of people, or I guess maybe the average person are not going to recognize. We've got Mary Berg, Elizabeth Kaufman Koenig. Elizabeth Kaufman Koenig is mentioned in here in our Holocaust, uh, Holocaust, I mean the Holocaust Museum, uh, the diary exhibit, excuse me. We've got the Frank sisters, obviously, Ruth Mayer. <clears throat> we have the beautiful Rinya Spiegel, who will be doing a youth chats soon. Thomas Kalka, who we did a youth chats before. Thomas was one of my very first non-diary children that I ever studied. And actually, it was because of Thomas Kalka that I found these two children. It was very odd how they kind of coincide. They didn't, well, they didn't know each other when they were alive, but I know they're familiar with each other now. So my thing for you is when you come into a Holocaust museum, be mindful, and this is a memorial space, because Jan Peter and Thomas Pfeffer were somebody's babies. They were somebody's sons. They were somebody's nephews. They were somebody's grandchildren. You have to remember that the people who died during the Holocaust were somebody's babies. And I think we should all be very mindful and be very respectful of that. So have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon, wherever y'all are watching this. We'll see you next time. Bye.